a universe from nothing. 13.7 billion years ago our universe came into existence. And we also exist. These two facts lead to a very important question. Where did all this come from? Now regardless of whether one believes in a creator or not, our own mortality poses a critical question. The ramifications of this question can lead to death being seen as eternal existence or eternal nothingness. Despite its importance, most people will invest far more time searching for their next phone or deciding upon their next meal. Contemplation can lead us to two different conclusions. Everything that exists is a result of a naturalistic process or everything is caused by something immaterial outside of time and space. With the naturalistic explanation, four main arguments arise. The universe has always existed, the universe has come into existence from other material causes, there are an infinite number of universes, the multiverse theory, or that the universe is a cyclic universe and part of an eternal sequence. Let us delve more deeply into these four materialistic explanations. The universe has always existed. Now this theory that the universe has no beginning contradicts mainstream science. There is overwhelming evidence to show that the universe began to exist around 13.7 billion years ago and this is widely accepted within the scientific world. The current view is that the universe began with what's called the Big Bang Immediately following that was a stage of inflation, which was a, an exponential expansion, which settled down, for one reason or another, into a more sedate expansion, which then became a, an exponential expansion, which is what we see, uh, what we got the Nobel Prize a few years ago, the accelerated expansion of the universe. The universe came into existence from other material causes. This theory raises more questions than it answers. We now need an explanation for those material causes which are likely contingent and dependent on something else. It then creates an illogical infinite regression of causes known as the infinite regress fallacy. It is illogical because if infinite material causes are necessary to bring about our present universe, we would never be able to traverse the infinite number of steps needed to get to the present moment. The Multiverse This theory cannot account for the infinite amount of matter and energy necessary to generate an infinite number of universes. Is it uncaused? Otherwise we fall back into the infinite regression fallacy. Even more illogical than the idea of uncaused matter and energy is the concept of infinite matter and energy. Other than a mathematical abstraction the quantifiable infinite is not plausible or coherent. Imagine adding or subtracting one from infinite. It results in an absurd conclusion of infinite minus one. A cyclic universe. A theory proposing a universe with no beginning and no end is still required to justify the origin of matter and energy. A cyclic universe cannot account for the fine-tuning of the universe and how these infinitesimal small values randomly found their correct proportions. We are now left with the second viable conclusion that the universe was created by a creator of unimaginable power who chose to create the universe at a specific time. The first cause is by necessity uncaused which is the exact Islamic definition of God. 
Ultimately, the choice lies between believing that matter, energy and the laws of physics have always existed without a cause, or believe in an uncaused cause for everything, a creative power of incredible might and intelligence. The ultimate truth cannot be directly and empirically known, therefore we need to take a conclusion based upon logic and reason. Just as we do with every other decision in life, we accept that which is more probable. If we eliminate the highly improbable, then what is left, no matter how unpalatable, must be the truth. Allah says in the Quran, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and in the alternation of the day and the night, there are signs for people of reason.